Good evening everyone. Uh, today we will talk about a very fundamental law which governs spectroscopy and uh, which is used uh, to calculate concentration of molecules, organic compounds and their structure also we get information about a structure of the compounds as well. This is called Beers and Lambert's law. Solution of a compound and you pass through some light, some electromagnetic radiation with the uh, intensity of I naught and if you, if you calculate the transmitted light which is going across this solution and the intensity of transmitted light is I. The I naught is always more than I and the path length the light has to travel is L here, L centimeter for example. So, it means that this compound, a, any compound is capable of absorbing light of a specific wavelength. And uh, what wavelength a compound absorb that depends on the chemical nature of that compound. So, this light which is being absorbed by the compound is called absorbance and the light being transmitted this is shown in term of transmittance. The transmittance is equal to I upon I naught where I is the intensity of incident light sorry I is the intensity of transmitted light and I naught is the incident light and this also can be shown in term of percent transmittance if you show in, some, in term of uh, percent transmittance you need to multiply this by 100. It means we, we need to have the amount of incident light I naught and how much light is being transmitted by that sample in order to calculate transmittance of that sample. For calculation of absorbance, absorbance is uh, equal to minus log T. So, that is the relation between transmittance and absorbance. So, in that way absorbance would be equal to I naught upon I of course, you need to take log here. So, log I naught upon I is equal to absorbance. So, from transmittance you can calculate absorbance that is what is done in fact uh, by using Beers and Lambert's law we are able to calculate absorbance of a, uh, absorbance of a compound at a certain wavelength and I naught is always more than I because the compound absorbs. So, whatever light is incident, whatever electromagnetic radiation is incident, some, some, some radiation is absorbed, some intensity is taken up by the sample and uh, why it happens? That depends on the chemical nature of that compound. So, when you have a solution of any, any compound and you, you radi irradiate with some intensity of light, there is a change in electronic structure of that compound. Electrons from ground state, they jump to the high energy state into what you call excited state. And to jump from ground state to higher energy state, some energy is required. So, that energy is taken up by the, from the light which the compound is being irradiated. But this compound does not remain for very long time into the high energy state. Compound means the basically these are electron transitions. So, these electrons comes down to the ground state and when they do, say, uh, they do so, they emit the same amount of energy. So, here are two things, electrons are absorbing radiation and they are emitting radiation. So, that is why there are two types of spectroscopy. When we measure how much amount of light or EMR electromagnetic radiation or what wavelength EMR is being uh, absorbed by a compound electrons of a compound that comes under under absorption spectroscopy and if you we also can measure how much at what wavelength and how much energy is being emitted by a, by a compound after exciting it at a certain wavelength. So, that uh, emission is measured in emission spectroscopy. For example, in UV visible spectroscopy is it is an example of uh, 
absorption spectroscopy. So we measure how much amount and what wavelength of EMR is being absorbed by, by certain compound. And uh, uh, in case of emission spectroscopy, the example is uh, like fluorescence. If you, uh, fluorescent compound, if you, if you excite them at a certain wavelength, they emit at a different wavelength. So at what wavelength and how much energy is being emitted, again that will depend on chemical nature of the compound, electronic configuration of the compound. So in that way using absorption and emission spectroscopy, we can, we, we can have idea about electronic structure of the compound, even concentration of the compound, and they, these all governs by Beer's and Lambert's law. So uh, a group in a compound which is capable of absorbing certain wavelength radiation, that is called chromophore. And uh, this chromophore uh, absorb radiation depending on its chemical structure, electronic configuration. For example, uh, in case of proteins, there are various type of chromatograph, various type of groups which can uh, which can absorb electromagnetic radiation. For example, in, in peptide, peptide bond, we know that proteins have uh, many peptide bonds where amino acids are joined together. So peptide bonds is capable of absorbing uh, EMR from say 190 nanometer to uh, 215 or 220 nanometer range. Similarly, there are certain amino acids in protein like tryptophan, cysteine, tyrosine, they absorb at 280 nanometer of electromagnetic radiation. And uh, even there are cofactors and prosthetic group in different proteins which have different absorbance at a different portion of the uh, electromagnetic radiation. So for example, NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide is a cofactor which is used by many dehydrogenase enzymes where oxidation reduction occurs. So the reduced form of NAD plus is NADH and uh, this uh, NADH can be oxidized back to NAD plus by dehydrogenases. And if you look at their absorption spectra, the both compounds oxidize and reduce form absorb at 260, around 260 nanometer here. So that's a uh, lambda max. Lambda max is a uh, certain wavelength of uh, radiation which is absorbed maximum by that compound. That's called lambda max or maximum absorbance where a compound has. So similarly, if you see the NAD plus oxidized and reduced form, they both absorb at 260 nanometer, but at 340 nanometer, only NAD, NADH, the reduced form of NAD is capable of absorbing. So that's a differentiation. So by using this absorption wavelength, we can differentiate NAD plus and NADH also because they have a difference in the lambda max. NAD doesn't absorb at 340 nanometer, whereas NAD absorbs some radiation. So that's how you can use the same wavelength. For example, if you want to differentiate uh, NAD plus and NADH, simply just take absorbance at uh, 340 nanometer. NAD plus uh, doesn't absorb at 340 nanometer, whereas NADH uh, does absorb. So that's how you can differentiate. And uh, this absorbance, uh, absorbance uh, by a compound also depend, along with the wavelength, also depend on concentration. For example, uh, you have one compound which has uh, 5 mg per ml concentration and 10 mg per ml concentration. You see the absorbance is always high for high, con high uh, concentration of the compound at, at certain wavelength. So that means if you increase concentration, absorbance also increases. And that's what was told by Beers and Lambert's and they, this, they have given very famous law about this. And uh, they said that the absorbance by a compound would depend on uh, concentration of that compound is a directly proportional to the concentration. There is a, and in fact, there's a linear relationship between absorbance and concentration of a compound. If you increase concentration of the compound, absorbance uh, by that compound will also increase. At the same time, it also depends on path length. Path length is how much distance uh, radiation is traveling in that compound, or in fact, uh, where you keep that compound, that's called is a transparent um, cuvette. So the size of the cuvette 
the width of the cuvette is also also decide about the absorbance. If you if you if you have wider cuvette, means path length increase, it you will have higher obser uh, higher absorbance. So absorbance is directly proportional to concentration C, and the path length light is traveling L, and there is a coefficient epsilon. So epsilon is a actually molar absorptivity. It's also called it's a extinction coefficient, which again again depend on the chemical nature of that compound. This intrinsic property of the compound. So A is absorbance here, uh, E extinction coefficient or molar absorptivity or molar extinction coefficient. So when concentration C is taken in molar molar solution moles per liter. This E is called molar extinction coefficient. The path length L is generally taken in centimeter. So that uh, ex uh, ex the unit of extinction coefficient would be equal to absorbance divided by CL. That is, will give rise to liter per mole per centimeter. So that's a unit of molar absorption coefficient. So as per Beers and Lambert's law, the absorbance by a compound would depend directly on concentration of that compound and path length traveled. So from this, we can, we, we, we can use it in order to calculate concentration of a compound. If we don't know the concentration of a compound, simply take, but before that we should know at what, uh, what wavelength the compound absorbs. So absorbance can be taken at that wavelength, and from that we can drive concentration. L is always fixed because we know uh, the width of a cuvette in an instrument, what is called spectrophotometer, you use cuvette in order to calculate absorbance. So L is fixed, extinction coefficient is also fixed for a compound. And uh, C we need to calculate, so from absorbance, concentration C can be easily calculated. And that's where most of the application of this law are there when you need to calculate concentration of a unknown compound. And there is always a linear relationship as per the law. Absorbance and concentration, they have a linear relationship, but uh, there are some limitations. It's not always linear. For example, if you, it's only linear when you have dilute solutions. If you use very high concentrated solution of the compound and you are taking absorbance, the relationship will be different. It won't be linear. It will deviate from linearity because even high concentration may form oligomers, dimer, trimer, and so on of the compound. And in that way, your calculation of concentration will not be accurate. Then uh, the wavelength, the lambda max chosen in order to take absorbance should be 10 times of the stray light. That's very important because if it's stray light, it basically is a background noise. So in order to reduce the background noise, your wavelength should absorb should be absorbed 10 times higher than the stray light by that compound. The attenuator must act independently. If in a compound solution there are more than one type of uh, chromophores, in that way they should not absorb at the same wavelength. In me, there is a there is a heterogeneity of chromophore in the compound, so they should be independent of each other. They should absorb differently. And uh, the attenuating medium must be homogeneous. It should be homogeneous medium means clearly is a clean solution, clear solution of the compound. And uh, there should not be any turbidity. So there should not be any scattering also. If turbidity if compound is not properly soluble, a clear solution is not there. So you see turbidity is there. So that will give rise to scattering. And from scattering, your calculation will be different. And the incident radiation should preferably be monochromatic. That's again important because uh, we know that every compound absorb maximum at a certain wavelength only. So we need to use incident light of that wavelength only out of the spectra. We use only same wavelength wa which is being absorbed maximally by that compound. So that's why, that why it should be monochromatic, the light which being uh, incident on the sample. Then this molar extinction coefficient of a compound is basically uh, if you use one centimeter path length radiation to travel and concentration of that compound is one mole per liter or one molar solution. So whatever absorbance you get from one molar solution of a compound using one centimeter path length, that is actually extinction, molar extinction coefficient. So in case of protein, uh, Theoretically, also molar extinction coefficient can be calculated. 
For example, proteins absorb at 280 nanometer. And there are mainly three, tri three types of groups in protein which absorb at 280 nanometer. That's a cysteine, tryptophan, tyrosine amino acids. And they have a fixed uh, value of their molar absorption coefficient, which are given here, 120, 5690, 1280 respectively. So in a protein, if we know number of these amino acids, molar extinction coefficient of that protein can be calculated theoretically. So how do you do that? So molar extinction coefficient is equal to x into m trip, means x is the number of tryptophan amino acid. m trip is molar extinction coefficient of tryptophan. So for example, if you have two tryptophan amino acids in a protein, so you multiply two with the uh, 5690, which is molar absorption coefficient of tryptophan. Similarly, y is the number of tyrosine amino acid in the protein. M tyrosine is molar extinction coefficient of tyrosine amino acid, which is uh, 1280. Then Z, Z is number of cysteine amino acid in the protein. And M cysteine is molar extinction coefficient of cysteine, which is 120. So, from if you know number of amino acid in a protein, the molar extinction coefficient of the protein also can be calculated theoretically. So, let's take some numerical problems based on Beers and Lambert's law. An aliquot of solution containing light absorbing substance at a concentration of 5 mg per liter was placed in a 2 centimeter cuvette. So here the concentration of a substance is 5 mg per liter and the cuvette, uh, cuvette width is 2 cm from where light will be going across traveling into. Transmission of 80 percent was recorded. So transmission was found to be 80 percent which is equal to 0 0.8. Then uh, uh, calculate absorbance of the solution. So we need to calculate how much will be absorbance of that solution and also calculate molar extinction coefficient of the compound with the molecular weight of 410. So molecular weight is given, transmittance is given, concentration and path length is given. From these data, we need to calculate absorbance and extinction coefficient. So concentration is given 5 gram per liter. So because concentration we use in uh, molarity in moles per liter, so we need to convert this 5 gram into moles per liter. How do you do that? You simply first convert that into gram, which is equal to 5 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 grams, and you divide that with the molecular weight of the compound, which is 410. So then you get uh, 0 0.012 millimol. So the concentration of this compound is 0 0.012 millimolar. So here we converted milligram per liter to molar solution. Then uh, transmittance is 80 percent. That means 80 uh, percent means 80 divided by 100. So that would be 0 0.8. And path length is given at 2 centimeter. Now we know that uh, absorbance is equal to minus uh, log t. So simply you take the value of t as 0 0.80 and you put here for absorbance. So that would be equal to minus log 0 0.8. And if you if you calculate further, the absorbance would be 0 0.096. So from here, we, we, we are able to convert transmittance into absorbance. So absorbance is there. And from Beers and Lambert's law, we know that absorbance is equal to extinction ECL, extinction coefficient into concentration into path length. And so from here, we will drive the next uh, value of molar extinction coefficient. So absorbance we have got uh, 0 0.096 which is equal to ECL and uh, so extinction would be equal to absorbance 0 0.096 divided by C concentration which was 0 0.012 millimol which, which means 0 0.012 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 moles into path length is 2 centimeter. The L is 2 centimeter. And if you further sort it out, you calculate it, you will get uh, the value of extinction coefficient as 4000 liter per mole per centimeter. So this is the value of extinction coefficient of the given compound. Now let's take uh, another example. Uh, what is the absorbance when the light transmitted is 50% of the initial beam 
in a 2 cm path length cell, Q8 is also called cell. So, Q8, uh, the width of Q8 given is 2 cm and uh, transmitted light is 50 percent of the initial beam and the concentration of the sample is given 10 raised to the minus 3 molar. So, we need to calculate extinction coefficient of this. So, we have been given uh, the initial intensity of light is 100, what is being transmitted is 50. L, the value of L path length is 2 centimeter and the this is the concentration. So, now this very another very simple question. So, we know that transmittance is equal to uh, intensity, intensity which is being transmitted divided by initial intensity of the radiation. And we also understand that uh, absorbance is equal to minus log T which is also equal to I naught upon I. And as per the question we know the initial intensity I naught is 100 and after being transmitted is 50. So, from here the absorbance would be equal to 0 0.30 and uh, because we need to calculate extinction coefficient which is equal to absorbance divided by concentration, this is absorbance divided by concentration 10 to minus 3 molar and this is path length 2 centimeter. So, just simply put into the formula and the extinction coefficient what you will get is equal to 150 liter per mole per centimeter. So, this is the value of uh, extinction coefficient. So, that is how using Beers and Lambert's law concentration of a given compound and uh, extinction coefficient of the compound can be calculated if we have absorbance of that compound at a given wavelength where the compound absorb maximum.